Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, testing and learning from uh, digital campaigns and how to get the most out of our communications. As so wonderfully summarised, um, I've been working in digital for just over a decade. I started out agency side, leading testing those campaigns for corporates and NGOs. And then for the global campaigning platform Change.org, and most recently for the UK Labour Party, where we lost an election disastrously. But we um, achieved a lot of milestones digitally, and so I think there are some insights um, to be taken, which I hope to share with you, and I'm really fascinated to hear what comes up in the comments. So what I'm going to um, talk through quickly in the next 20 minutes is, to me, what is a testing-led communications program? What has it looked like in practice in some of the organisations I've worked in? And then some of the tensions I've come across, um, and I'm really interested to hear if you have others or insight into these. So first of all, what is testing? Um, kind of experience often that when members of the team feel so proud of what they've done to let them test it and when it doesn't do well to say I'm sorry we don't send it out any further we don't spend any more time on it can be a very um, hard experience but those two attitudes to me are what make a testing led program possible so what does it mean at that kind of highest level what does it look like in practice to be testing campaigns when I worked for the platform change.org Every single week, we would take the fastest growing petitions on the platform. And for anyone that doesn't know, Change.org is a, um, it's a campaigning platform. So anyone, anywhere can create a petition and encourage other people on the platform to sign it. And so every week, we would look at what are the best performing, uh, the fastest growing campaigns at the moment. 
we would take three or four of them, we would do a lot of work with the people that had created them to say, okay, let's develop an email around your story, let's think of a Facebook post and some tweets to promote it. And we would send an email out, we would send one email per campaign out to about 40,000 people, and whichever um, campaign grew most from that email, we would send that email out to the rest of the list. And that is how we would decide what we were working on for the rest of the week. That is how we identified what are our priorities going to be. Obviously, one of the challenges there is you come in on a Monday and you have literally no idea what you're working on. Um, also one of the exciting elements. At the Labour Party, it was about saying, OK, we know what our goal is in any instance. Often it would be about recruiting volunteers, or it would be about the number of people who could see our message on Facebook. And we would develop two completely different tactics, two completely different campaigns for trying to get people to do that. Work up an email for each one, send them both to 40,000 people, and whichever one won, that was the one that um, we would send out wider. And so we were always going through this process, okay, defining the goal of what it is we're trying to achieve. Send out the test segments, calculate the statistical significance, send the winner. Um, and, and one of the other tensions for us there is that, that um, it requires the rest of the organization to think about planning in a different way. So when they're like, please tell me what you're going to do for the next six weeks to you know, get out our message and hit our goals, it's like, well, we've got three variants that we're testing next week, and then depending on which one of those wins, the week after that, we'll be testing three more variants. Um, and I, I think that's another challenge. The other way that we tested campaigns um, is sometimes we would have an idea that we'd think, okay, we think there are legs in this, we think it's a good one. We would create the, the fastest kind of expression of that idea. We would send it out to a sample of people. So again, for us, normally a sample of 40,000 people. And if it hit a benchmark for engagement, we'd send it out wider. And if it nearly hit the benchmark, we'd try tweaking it and, and test it again. And if it fell well short, we just abandoned it and moved on. So this is an example of a campaign that we developed around the um, anniversary of the creation of the National Health Service in the UK. And it asked you, we were really struck by this fact that, so the, it was a 66th anniversary of the UK National Health Service, and 44 million babies had been born on our health service in that time. And we were all struck by kind of how emotive we found that. And so we had this campaign where you put in your birthday and we told you what number baby you were to be born on the National Health Service. And we'd been, we'd been talking about this as a group. We thought it was a really great idea. We kind of very roughly prototyped it by literally creating an Excel form and asked 20 of our friends to do it and said, you know, are you intrigued? Are you interested? We sent it out to those 40,000 people. It hit all of our benchmarks. Um, and so then we sent it out wider. And we had, at the Labour Party, we had bench, very different benchmarks for different types of action. So if it was about getting the message out widely, we had a benchmark that we wanted 10% of people receiving an email to share it. If it was to volunteer or donate, it, it was only 1%, knowing that less people would do that. Um, on social media, this meant we were always trying to produce multiple different um, pieces of content to express one idea and we would post them normally an hour apart and we just had this rough and ready benchmark. If in 30 minutes it got 500 likes, that was a pretty solidly performing piece of content. It was worth A, reposting that, but B, trying to use that kind of particular formulation more. And this, um, these two graphics make me smile because it's the super ugly one on the right that kept winning. It didn't matter how pretty the thing we uh, tested it against was, it's just always more successful. So this is an, uh, another example of uh, two very different ways we were trying to communicate a message about the National Health Service. We were just posting them both about an hour apart. Whichever one got the higher engagement, that was a piece of content we would post more regularly. That was a piece of content we were saying, okay, can we use that format again? Um, I'm going to skip over uh, kind of multivariate testing for email because I think it's so common now, but only to say that once we had kind of tested campaigns at change.org 
or at the Labour Party. We would be testing kind of, does the concept have something to them, which is a winning campaign? And then, okay, next, can we iterate on the subject line? Can we improve the call to action? Does it work better with an image or without one? Um, and then we just had a continuous program of testing on our website, looking at what is the best layout, what are the best colors, how do we best phrase that call to action. Okay. So now I'm going to um, very quickly skim over, for me, what are some of the tensions when you're running a testing-led program? So one of them is building the brand versus testing the tactics, which is a discussion that I've had um, a lot of times in a lot of different contexts. And one of the um, kind of concerns or fears that I think uh, people have is that if you're always testing an individual uh, piece of content for what is the best for performing at any moment, um, the fear is, are you telling a story over the long run? How are you building a kind of longer term brand that has kind of consistency and emotive appeal? And I think that that is a really valid question because I think only a bad testing program tests things which are inconsistent with your brand. When you're thinking about what you're putting in the pool to test, for me, one of those golden rules is it always has to tell the kind of longer term um, narrative. And uh, for people who don't work in digital, I feel like for them, the penny drops when they think, oh yes, so the narrative gets tested in kind of focus groups or through qualitative research. And then just like the individual piece of content, the way we phrase that can be, can be tested at scale digitally. Um, and, I, and the best, the kind of best thing I ever uh, heard uh, an American Democrat strategist who I adore say was, you know, you're never testing the goal you're never testing your principles. You know, you've just got to believe in those things. The question is only, how are you testing the best way to communicate them? Um, the second tension, which has arisen in my line of work a lot, is the speed of response versus optimizing that kind of reply. So we have a lot of uh, kind of charity-based TV shows in the UK where we'll have a kind of evening of entertainment um, and it, in it there'll be kind of calls to action to donate to causes or to get involved. And those moments obviously um, represent this incredible opportunity for charities to be active on social media and on their website and through their email program because they're at this moment of, height, um, of heightened activity. And I, I've seen in a lot of charities the question be asked, well, given this kind of short uh, window, this short time period we have where everyone's watching, is it best just to get you know, something out there? Or should we test because at this moment of opportunity, we really want to get the best version? And in politics, the um, way you really experience it is normally after a debate, after a candidate's or leader's debate. So as soon as that debate ends, you have this 15 minutes where everyone is thinking about politics. They're really ripe to hear your messages and your supporters are ready to be asked to volunteer or donate. They've really worked themselves up. But often, certainly in the UK and in the US, debates are quite late in the evening. So you actually do have 15 or 20 minutes while people are kind of have worked themselves up and then they're going to go to bed. <laughs> um, and so we spent a lot of time wondering, okay, just after that debate ended, do we say we've got to be there in that 15 or 20 minute window in people's Facebook feeds, in people's email inbox, we just roll out one message and you know, based on the previous testing we've done, hope it's the right one? Or do we try and test in the first five minutes? Um, and talking with uh, people on the Obama campaign, and at, and um, some of the more recent Democrat American campaigns, um, no matter how sophisticated the technology they're using, actually, when your time window is that short, I've always found in those instances, you have to trust your gut. Those moments of peak opportunity, you can only send one thing out. Um, finally, testing for today versus testing for new year, um, testing for next year. For me, this is the most difficult uh, tension with testing 
one of the um, one of my fears is that when we're so focused on testing, it means that we uh, are most likely to to send out messages and to frame our narrative with extreme urgency. You know, we have to do something now and we need you to take this extraordinary action because those are the things that are most likely um, to perform best in any one individual moment. But what is the kind of um, impact of that over the long term? Does it create cynicism? Um, if every single kind of charity and political party is sending out messages that say, urgent, only you can save the world right now, you must, you know, donate money or sign up to volunteer. In a, in a couple of years, what kind of cynicism does that breed? And I don't kind of have an easy way um, to resolve this, only to say that for me, this is a kind of real limitation for testing and that there's, there's some need to balance it with defining goals around engagement and emotional support. So in my experience in NGOs and in politics, that's been about any kind of response to your organization. When people are taking a survey, telling you about the issues they care about, when they ask you a question, um, when, they make a, when they can take the time to make a comment, and trying to make sure that we always have content-led campaigns as well as action-led urgency campaigns. Um, and then um, finally, I think one of the myths around digital testing is that it's, it's really cheap. And it, it can be very cheap if you're prepared to spend a lot of time and often if you have a lot of in-house expertise on finding super um, cheap tools. But the minute you're operating at any kind of scale, it, it does become expensive. There are the, tool, the testing tools that are out there, which are absolutely fantastic, are, are quite expensive. Um, and you have to factor in the kind of staff time, which I think is very significant in making sure you're building in the expertise into teams. Um, and so I guess I feel like that's just something that has to be acknowledged. The... the um, in my experience, the value has always outweighed the cost, um, but the myth that it's free is indeed a myth. All right, fantastic. That's all from me, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing other people's experiences and any questions.